Hey guys, it's Benjamin with Benjamin's Exotics, and in today's video, we're gonna be cutting ball python clutch number two of 2019. Now before we go ahead and we actually kind of unveil and cut open the remaining three eggs because two of the eggs have already pipped from clutch number two, I wanna go ahead and quickly talk to you guys about, you know, kind of how much this clutch really means to me. And this is something that I know it's, you know, relatively basic, you know, pastel and spider, two genes, but this is a snake that I've been wanting to produce for literally about six years. I know that the first two ball python morphs that I ever saw when I was about uh, eight and a half, coming up on nine years old, was a pastel and a Mojave. There was a reptile specialty store that I'm not going to say the name of, but it was actually relatively close to our house. Well, I say relatively close, about half an hour away. And we would go there and literally every week, okay, or every other week, we would be kind of in the area, we would stop in. And I remember, I think it was the third or fourth time of going to this store, which was just absolutely fantastic. I know the owners very well, and they have just, you know, a huge amount of reptiles, and they're still in business today. But I remember it was probably the third or fourth time of going into this store and they had an adult female spider, which alone just really blew me away from compared to, you know, the average pastels, Mojave, stuff like that, which were cool, but not as different as like a spider ball python. And then they had two little baby bumblebees. One was a male, one was a female. Now I believe back then, I think the price of a bumblebee was like 500, maybe $600. So back then I was way out of my price range as you know, an eight or nine year old kid, but it was something that I was just fascinated about. So when I came home, I mean, I Googled pictures and I was just obsessed with this. And I figured that after I got my first ball python, which was a normal, I definitely wanted to try to breed to produce this really stunning morph. And even today with the you know, huge color palette of morphs that we have, anything from like, you know, bananas, clowns, pides, uh, leopards, spot nose, all kinds of really crazy stuff that you can mix to make really cool combos. One of my favorite ball pythons still, if not the number one favorite ball python that I'm probably ever gonna have, is still just a really nice quality bumblebee. Just the really nice gold you get from the pastel and the yellow on the sides, a really high white spider put together, I still think to this day can make some of the most incredible morphs that we've ever seen on the ball python market. Now before I go ahead and we cut open the last three eggs, I do wanna show you guys the parents to this clutch. Now unfortunately, both of them are kind of going into shed or just full in shed and aren't really looking their best, but these are snakes that I handpicked out of probably 10 different spiders and I think probably six or seven different pastels from that same pet shop that I saw that spider ball python female and the bumblebee in. And I literally went through clutches of different stuff just waiting for the exact perfect snake to show you. And this is also a good lesson for anyone out there that does want to breed. I think I waited three or four months to get my first spider ball python and another three or four months to get the pastel that I wanted. Why would I do that? Because I was very, very specific. I was really looking to pick out a really nice yellow and orange pastel as a baby and a really clean spider. I didn't want on any spots and I wanted very few breaks going down the back of the snake's back. Now I'm going to show you guys both of those snakes right now. So first of all we have right here, this is mom. So this is the pastel 66% possible het lavender albino female. Again, that was just like a bonus. I don't know if I'm ever trying to prove her out or not, but she is actually again, she did just lay eggs. Well, roughly 60 days ago, because that's when these guys have just started hatching. But as you'll be able to see on this girl, she's probably hiding under the paper, she is still, for her age, a very, very golden pastel. This is, I mean, no filters or anything. We're just using like a standard camera. And she is just beautiful. As a baby, all this gold was like a really, really, really nice yellow. And you can actually see on the sides, all of this yellow was literally an orange in coloration. So this is like a perfect, fantastic pastel. Also not too much blushing down the back, but definitely enough to be, you know, pretty obvious that this is indeed a pastel. And while she definitely hasn't been the best eater out of all the ball pythons that I've had, she's been a little bit picky over the years. She still hit 1,500 grams this year and of course was able to drop six eggs in total. One was a slug, the other five were really great, but hey, she is of course a first year female, so you can't expect much better than that. And then down here on the other rack, we actually have the 
dad or the male to the clutch and this is the spider ball python and I remember that the clutch that I actually bought this guy from had four others in there so I really did have a wide selection to pick from but as you can see again both of these guys are in shed so they're not even showing their best colors and I will of course put up pictures right now of uh, this guy and his best colors and of course the female uh, in her best colors that we have over on Instagram and if you guys aren't following us on Instagram make sure to check that out because we have lots of stuff that you won't see on the channel over there and I'm trying to be more consistent with posting and stuff but as you can see um, even in shed this guy looks really 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 nice you know we have a pretty nice color brown that's actually really light when he's not in shed really nice highlights and blushing on the back and of course that spider pattern we have a little bit of you know busyness in the front but besides that when we get to the back only one main break and then the rest of this is really nice so now that we've taken a look at both of these guys and kind of seen their colors we can go ahead and cut the last three eggs of this clutch okay so let's go ahead and get straight into it so uh, let, as you guys can see those are the ones we just showed that have already come out you can see his little one sticking its head out now because this egg is so big I do just kind of want to sneak back here and kind of you know look on this side because there was two places where the snake had cut open which is pretty unique I just want to make sure that everything's going well if we look in there yeah it looks like it's just one big normal ball python and a really pretty one at that it looks like Let's actually cut this egg open a little bit more. I don't I don't like to cut open a huge window. And again, I'm keeping my scissors really close to the top so we don't, you know, accidentally cut the snake. There you are, little guy, moving around. Yeah, this is just going to be one big, normal ball python. And a really nice one at that. And then, of course, we have over here the bumblebee. We can actually cut open this guy a little bit more. Give a little bit better of a shot. just like that and we can actually kind of up for the camera hopefully it focuses look at that really really nice quality bumblebee now we have three more eggs to go well these <laughs> were already technically cut open so let's start with this one now this one is the one that i'm the most sure is going to be a normal and again i'm just going to pinch the top right here when we're starting a new cut so i make sure that i'm going to you know cut my finger not the snake if anything would go wrong and i'm just going to make a little snip right here at the top of the egg a little bit of goop coming out actually a lot of goop coming out relative to the other eggs that we did in the other cutting and then I'm just gonna come right through here, make sure my scissors are all the way at the top, and kinda go just like that. Okay, so let's see what we've got. And if I'm not mistaken, getting goop all over the table here. If we go ahead and we look, That is going to be, this definitely doesn't have spider in it because I can see the head. That is going to be kind of hard to tell. That's going to have to be another normal. Um, if it was a pastel, I mean, there is a little bit of blushing on the side, so it's actually kind of hard to tell just through the egg, but I'm 99% sure because of the speckling on the sides and a little bit more dirty pattern that that is gonna be the normal. So uh, again, we have two normals so far and one bumblebee. Now let's see, if we can hit the odds and get two more bumblebees, that would of course be the best thing. But actually I do wanna see the single version of both the pastel and the spider without the influence of any other genes. So let's see what we got in this. Again, just gonna pinch right here at the top, make a little snip. Right like that. I'm going to come through, keep my scissors all the way at the top of the egg. Kind of just go through like that. As long as you keep the scissors at the top of the egg and you really make sure, I mean, there's not really any risk of cutting the little baby snake, which it, of course is not what we want to do. Now let's see what we have here. I think this is the little snake's head. Yes, it looks like it is, so good thing. I was extra careful there. Come on, little buddy. I don't really want to... Let's go like that. It looks like I did snip a vein with this one. Again, these snakes are far enough developed that, you know, snipping a vein is nothing. You'll see a little bit of blood right there. That's not me cutting the baby snake. That's just an extra kind of vein that was left over from development that didn't get used. And this one's coming out to explore. Little bumblebee. 
Okay. I believe that is going to be another. This is definitely a normal. So um, hopefully you guys are getting a pretty good shot of that. Uh, you can kind of see, it's very easy to tell this is a normal because we have all the speckling on the side. It's more of a brown, not a gold. And on the snake's back and a little bit on its nose. Well, first of all, the nose you can see has no yellow. So if you guys didn't see how to identify a pastel ball python, uh, go check that video out. But you would know that on pastels, they would always have the yellowing on the lip, which that one does not. So that is another normal. So, so far we've actually got three normals and one bumblebee. Not horrible odds. Um, definitely compensating for the amazing odds that we got in the other clutch. So let's go ahead and finish this final egg. Okay, so down to the last egg. And we have this little bumblebee right here. I think this guy's been out for a little bit longer than I even thought because he's already, well, he or she is already moving around quite a bit. So again, same exact thing as the other ones. This egg feels like it has a lot, well, maybe not. <laughs> it felt a lot drier than the other ones. So normally that means that there's less goop and the baby's a little bit closer to really being ready to hatch. I mean, all these guys are easily ready to hatch and we talked about the advantages in the other video of why we cut eggs it really can save a lot of babies lives when you're dealing with a little bit of higher numbers and there's just all kinds of things you know not having an egg tooth just not being strong enough to cut through the egg and that's why cutting um, your eggs really can help out the baby snakes and make sure that they have the best chance at surviving and not only that but thriving at life as possible so this is the final egg Let's see if we hit the odds and get uh, something more than a normal. We have three normals so far. And that right there is going to be a pastel. And you can actually see, hopefully, let's see if we can get a good shot of that on the camera, get to focus. If I pull this back, see all those little veins and stuff and see that vein going over? Those are just leftover stuff, and if I do snip those, you'll see blood come out. That's not actually part of the baby snake, but you can actually see, uh, I can't see the snake's head, so I can't show you guys the thing with the yellow on the lip, but if we just look right here, it's very easy to see. On that snake's back, hopefully you guys can get a shot on that right there, near my finger. I'm hoping the camera's picking it up pretty good, but I can see the blushing on the back right there, and of course just the overall coloration and the orange on the sides. I know that this is gonna be a pastel, and a really nice looking pastel at that. Really reduced pattern, just like mom. And then again, we'll probably give this clutch about, I would say in the next two to three days, all of these guys should have completely hatched out. And then of course, we'll have an update video once these guys have shed and started feeding consistently. Okay, so it has actually been a few days since you guys just saw that clip of all the snakes, or there, I should say the remaining three ball python eggs being cut. And just as I was finishing up all of the final touches and edits on this video, I actually had the bumblebee ball python, who was the first one to hatch out, actually shed his or her skin. So I figured I would show you guys right now, just so you can kind of see the huge difference from when a snake first comes out of the egg and kind of how its colors are kind of, you know, more of a pinkish, you know, not really defined color to how much just one shed can really affect the overall look and appearance of that snake. So right here, as you guys can see, we have all of the babies numbered, and this one was the first one to come out. So we actually have 190201. So 2019, clutch number two, and of course, uh, baby number one. So let's go ahead and kind of just pull this guy out, and I'll show you. I have only taken a quick glimpse at this guy, and let me tell you, the colors are more than I could have asked for. I mean, just a really nice, clean, crisp bumblebee. And hopefully, I, I know some of these babies are a little bit nippy, so we'll see. And then right there, take a look at that. And hopefully we're getting a pretty good look on the camera. If it'll focus, come on, this thing's killing me. Oop, focus, come on. Doesn't really seem to be wanting to focus, come on. There we go. Now take a look at that. Let me actually kind of move over to here. We'll probably get a little bit better on the coloration just because of the white background, and there you go. Look at the difference. When the snake first was in the egg, it almost looked like, you know, just basically a white snake with this kind of, you know, crazy spider patterning. And as this thing has gotten a little bit older and just with one shed, no meals in it at all yet, you can just see that color is just fantastic. Just really, really nice. And you can see, we have a little bit of speckling on the side, but besides that, a really, really nice, clean bumblebee. So hopefully, him or her as an adult will look really, really nice and kind of hold on to these colors. All bumblebees will kind of fade out a little bit as they get older, some more than others, but man, I really am just 
I could not be happier with the way that this Bumblebee turned out. And even though we only hit one in the entire clutch, we're probably gonna do the exact same pairing next year to see if we can produce some more. Whether or not this is a male or a female, I don't care. This is definitely one of my holdbacks. I mean, you can tell. I've been waiting to, to produce this snake for a very long time, but man, just really, really nice colors on this guy. So bro, I hope you guys did enjoy and most importantly benefit from today's video. If you did like the video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.